there is hardly any other region where you're gonna get this many different talents or exotic talents than China. Exactly. Also, uh, putting that out there, people will still see that little live icon when they watch the clip. So, you, uh, thank you, Ultra Jante. I positive I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, for clipping that. We always love it when we get clips from the show because for starters, we get a lot of fun plays and for second, we get some really, f uh, we really enjoy seeing the clips. It brings in more viewers for us and that means we get more exposure for this wonderful reach. That means Kendrick gets more followers. <laughs> Yay! And potentially subscribers. Wow, this is a, uh, we're going to Braxis okay. and these teams Okay, the, neither team has won this map, and they've both only played it once. <laughs> Neat! Alright, I like it. Do you remember who picked it? Because I wasn't watching. Uh, a was host watching. lady picked okay, it. Okay, there we go, there we go. Cool! Uh, I like it! We have uh, seen Braxis hold out quite rarely in Phase 2 of HCC China. Uh, we all remember that one game where CE basically set up a new record for professional HCC play, taking the game of Wukong Gaming in below seven minutes. Very, very impressive here. I doubt that's gonna happen between those te two teams, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit less likely. Um, if anyone could pull it off, it's probably RPG, so... No. Yeah, we will see. Definitely true. So, are we gonna see Sylvanas play? We see a Zul ban. Very interesting. I mean, Zul has received a pretty significant update. Uh, his wave clear is almost second to none. And apparently, teams in China seem to value him on this battleground. I can't blame them. His wave clear is insane. He can clear those Zerg waves like hardly any other hero in the game. Exactly. He adds all of that AoE damage. He adds skeletons if there's any minions in there. Uh, I believe there's still a Corpse Explosion talent uh, true, for Zul, true. so it's late game, now. you could use that for some great wave clear. Yeah, very true. Keep in mind that Corpse Explosion also works on the skeleton that gets destroyed because you summon a new one. So every time you summon a new skeleton, it destroys the most, or the oldest one, if you will. And that one also causes the Corpse Explosion to trigger. So as Tetris said, great wave clear potential. However, with the rework and the fact that it was put to level 16, it's not that common anymore because uh, at 16 you have Bone Spear and that talent is just so good. Yes, it is. Uh, the fact it was a level 20 talent that was always the go-to and then got yeah. unchanged moves to level 16. 12 second cooldown, it's insane. It's pretty decent indeed. So, Greymane as the first pick for RPG is going to be a Loctar slash Infinity pick. Both of them are very happy to play it. Okay. Now... Uh, the gray main here. Lady. Genji's banned. I mean, a Rubrak is available if they want to go for that route. I would normally prefer securing a really stable solo laner in on Braxis Holot because on Braxis Holot you have the longest laning phase due to the way uh, the map plays. So very rarely will you see crazy rotations by several team members. It is normally a war of attrition. So who can bully the other team out of lane in time? So going for Nubrak and Uther, that is already pretty solid. Aureal should now be picked immediately, in my opinion, though, for RPG. Say again, sorry? I think Aureal should be picked immediately now for RPG if they don't want oh, to yes. lose the laning phase. The Aureal should be picked up if they, like, Greymane's not the best energy generator, but she's easily good enough with Greymane, so you can get the value there uh, well enough. If not, Rhaegar is viable. They could pick him, uh, but they would have to ban out Ariel to prevent that double support. Yeah. Okay. So, what are they going to respond with here? They're taking their sweet time. More wave clear, also an option. You know what? I would love to see Gul'dan Ariel. I think this combo has been neglected for so long on many different battlegrounds, and if it's ever been strong on one map, it's this one. And it provides strong wave clear, strong laning phase as well, a decent playmaking work ability, but RPG is having none of us. Screw you, Kendrick, we're gonna make you look yep. like a goof on stream, and they go for Malthay Murden, which is still very, very fine in my opinion. Indeed, they can still pick up either Ariel or Rhaegar. The problem is one can get banned and one can get picked. So we may actually see Sar and something a little bit different, Maybe he'll be doing his best CE impression and bringing out that bright way. Yeah. I mean, Alufel has been uh, on a roll on that hero as of late. So, yeah. He's like, oh, people it. really respect my Karazim. I'm not going to give the audience what they want. I'm going to play Brightwing and make him want that instead. And then I'll switch to Lili. <laughs> that's, that's my theory of his strategy. But either way, he's rocking it uh, these days. Yeah. Falsat getting banned away by Host Lady. Interesting. Well, they could have banned out the spores, but. 
yeah. sure, I guess. They want to remove those global potentials. I think that's basically, yeah, that's basically a very clear statement. Since Hot Slady is going to be the team that picks first after the second banning phase, and they and them banning the Falset is like, okay, guys, if you don't ban Dehaka right now, we're just going to pick him because A, he's a great soul laner, and B, he's really, really good for those... Uh, sudden flanks on Braxis Holdout when you fight for beacons, when you try to defend against the Zerg waves. So yeah, I just like it. Uh, well, RPGs having done of it though. They banned the Vala because they're still afraid of that double support comp with yeah. Oriol Uther. I would argue Cassie is a little bit better here, actually. True. Uh, just due to charge strikes hitting so many of the Zerg, you can just get such crazy value out of it. Okay. And Cassie in general has... Mm. Fairly decent wave clear, actually, if you manage to position your Fend correctly. Also, yeah. keep in mind that the Ball Lightning is a fantastic tool to zone out or make attacking heroes retreat. Um, because you don't want to spread those balls too, too much. Uh, apparently, the Charge Strike does not hit the Zerg. I have been corrected. I, I think it only jumps to heroes. Yeah, it, it used to. That's fair. Okay. It, it used to be, be triggered by buildings as well. So, for, what you can do is you can hit minions and neutral targets, I think, and it will still and bounce off to heroes, heroes, but okay. it won't work on structures anymore. Fair enough. We still end up seeing the Cassia coming in because she's still pretty good. Fend, at least, can be used on minions, so that's all good. Uh, for a little bit of extra clearing that way. Exactly. So, the Cassia, really solid choice here so far, especially against heroes like Greymane. She's so powerful. If you've ever played Greymane, Butcher, or Illidan against a Cassia, you will exactly know what I'm talking about. And Sonya's win rate, quite frankly, is more than impressive here in China. She's mm -hmm. She's been picked so many times. And another familiar face makes it back. Almost the same team comp here for the last two picks. Malfrey yeah, and Chromie, so... best buddies for life. So here's the point. I think we're going to see the first time of Chicken on Malfael. True. He's not played it yet. True. It's, I think this is the first RPG Malfael. Yeah, I, I haven't seen Chicken on any other hero than Zeratul, Dehaka, and Illidan as of late. So... Yeah. Thrall every now and then uh, manages to sneak in as well, but Malthael definitely a first time, and I would call him I would call him the Lord of Melee Assassins in China. So what can he make work on the Malthael? Wow, yeah, this uh, I'm hoping it is him. Otherwise, I guess he would be playing the Grey Main oh, or truth. maybe oh, no. even the not the Muradin. That's why, no. and not the Grey. Uh, finishing, yeah, definitely not the Chromie. Although that would be funny to see, see him play it like a melee assassin. Uh, <laughs> just play only time traps. <laughs> Um, we're going to see the Zarya to finish out here, and that's nice. The sort of pseudo double support with the, all that protection for the Sonya. Yeah, there we go. It's it's basically a double support comp. Zarya, despite being labeled a warrior, still has more supportive capabilities than any warrior in the game. Bar material, maybe, but uh, she's definitely a strong laner, and that's the main purpose of her being chosen here, because you can form a frightening four-man lane with an Uther, Zarya, double support. You can also absorb those tower shots early to boost and amplify your damage. And uh, once again, we take a sneak peek into the audience, live audience. For those of you who weren't able to watch yesterday, guys, this studio that HTC China is being broadcasted from is in the middle of a Chinese mall. It is absolutely fantastic. People can go do their shopping, buy some of the drink, buy some of the eat, and just enjoy some good Heroes of the Storm. Indeed. And I do like the Cassia as a reaction to the Chromie as well. It is, okay. It's better than running the Ariel, I would say, due to you still get the shields, it doesn't lock them in place, so you get the mobility good. Uh, I believe there's a spell shield shield for uh, Zarya herself. Yeah. So you can use that for even more self-protection. I know, I like it. Yeah, Cass uh, excuse me, Zarya is definitely not the worst hero to face uh, a Chromie uh, for, the, for the reasons you mentioned. Like, she can time her shields extremely easily against all that long range poke, but is it gonna be successful? Is it gonna be good? We're gonna find out in a bit here. It's game number two between RPG and Hot Ladies. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mules. It's not StarCraft, we tricked you! It's Heroes of the Storm, and it's gonna be RPG on the left-hand side. With Chicken on Malthael, Wang on Uther, Sar on Malfurion, Infinity 
on the Chromie and Loctar on that Greymane. Hearts Lady in red. We see why on the Cassia, Palmy on his Uther, Liz is gonna rock the Sonya, Meng on Zarya, and Carlo on the main tank on Anubarek. Man, you, you just mentioned uh, getting tricked by StarCraft 2 units and heroes <laughs> and announcers. Do you remember the time when Cloaken was uh, voicing over the Phoenix trailer for StarCraft 2 and everyone in Twitch chat was like, Oh my god, it's not gonna be that hero's gonna yeah. be Phoenix! <laughs> Baited, and it was right in the same advert break. Yeah, <laughs> showed, uh, showed stuck off properly. I think it was. Yeah, it was awesome. So we're seeing the rotations coming out as well as the uh, standard stuttering that we've come to expect from the stream at this point. Leas, well, win, getting focused down. RPG, pick it up first blood. Yeah, first blood, easy peasy for RPG, and uh, that's of course something uh, Hot Lady needs to be aware of. There is a lot of ganking potential on the side of RPG. You can send Malfurion and Muradin in there, they have a root and a stun to lock someone down. The Chromie, of course, can land her abilities from a hidden angle as well. So those highly immobile targets, like a Sonya or a Zarya, they need to be on their tippy toes not to get caught, and Ooh, while I'm speaking of Bobby. it, Tommy in trouble. Good. He's out. Okay, He's fine. Well, barely though. He's less fine. <laughs> He's gonna pull back behind his gate. Grab the fountain just to stay alive here. As top lanes, as we're not seeing the standard 4-1, we're seeing a 3-2 for both teams, and they're trying to mirror each other. And they're actually mirroring each other in the correct la in the uh, correct lane, incorrect lanes, in my opinion. They're actually mirroring each other in the weaker camp lane. Mm -hmm. Whereas I personally believe the stronger camp lane is potentially a little bit more efficient for the first rotation. Yeah. I do believe, however, this is the first Zerg wave correct, so I'm pretty sure it always spawns the same way around first one, with red spawning in the top and blue in the bottom. Uh, I would say it's random. I didn't really pay attention to it, though, but Find we're going to see. Oh, Mal just escapes. Lightning Fury not able to get the finishing blow there. Yeah, very, very close here. Yeah, Meng. Top blue bottom. Yeah, there we go. Now we see Meng in trouble here. Takes the healing fountain. That's always good yeah. to have. I do actually think that I'm right there, because this is always what we see when other teams seem to base race, with the red team going okay. top lane and blue team bot lane. So I think that is actually the theme. I may have learned that, or these teams are just exceptionally lucky. But just what we do know is that it's always going to switch around after that. So uh, Oh, yes. We, we can it's definitely always yeah. going back and forth. Exactly. So Carlo, oh my goodness, he needs to be oh, careful here. Carlo he's... is a squishy and new break. Gone. Yeah, he's I a goner. Done. Locked up, vaulting for freedom. Yeah, that's, that's another big weakness of Carlo here, in my opinion. He sometimes overdoes it. He sometimes doesn't know when to pull back. And especially when you play a rather squishy warrior like Anubrak, whose health pool has even been reduced with the light, latest balance update, then you just can't take that many free hits by the likes of Greymane and Malthale. Okay, so maybe just a, uh, just a hiccup here. Elias, though, in trouble as well. Sonya taking huge damage. And both areas, both beacons now, under control by RPG. Yeah, can they hold on to them though? We will have to see. Jack complaining about I might be out of sync. There's not a huge amount we can do about that, guys. We are all watching the clean feed. What, what, are, you sicking, uh, what, what are you sitting at right I'm now? I'm behind you, apparently. I'm on eight. You're on eight. Let me see what I can do here. Yeah. Um, There's not a huge amount we can do. We don't want to disrupt the stream too much. If it's yeah. a second, it's manageable. So exactly. we won't I'm also be also sitting at eight, according to my stats here. Okay. So. so hopefully, it's hopefully it will continue to be not yeah. so bad. But uh, if it's a second, we usually leave it because it's manageable. Yeah. But that's how, uh, just so you know how it works. We are casting from the clean feed of the Chinese stream. We have no control over the camera or anything like that. And it's better for Tetra to be slightly behind than vice versa because yes. otherwise he would be spoiling everything spoilers. that happened in a team fight. <laughs> <laughs> One second spoilers, the best yeah. kind. We have the, what is that title called? Bursting Light again from uh, fr coming in for Cassia? We saw it yesterday. Uh, it is the Surge of Light, or Surging Light. Surge of yeah. Light, cool. When you get stunned, you drop out of blind. Cool to see. Yeah, really cool, because there is plenty of bl uh, plenty of stuns available for Murden. Uh, he has, of course, the Stormbolt, which is going to be the primarily um, ability that this is targeted against, but also the roots by Malfurion can be really, really solid. Yes. Now, Lee is in trouble. Spin. Oh, <laughs> Couldn't out heal the damage of Malfail. Gets taken out. Yeah, here we go. Another kill against Sonya. And that reminds me of my Hero League game yesterday. Uh, we were still able to win that game, thank God. But the Sonya player that died four times in the first five minutes actually uh, said a very smart statement. Um, like, Sonya... <laughs> died four times in the first five minutes, right? But after that, she played a perfect game, an almost perfect game, never dying again, always uh, adding a lot of value to the team fights. And he was like, 
yeah, you might have criticized me for dying four times in the first five minutes, but after that, I didn't die. And guess what? Deaths after that are way more impactful, so uh, I carried. I mean, most of that sentence was correct. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of it, but most of it was correct. In comes the time <laughs> trap onto, onto uh, the Zarya. She holds the line onto the point, neutralizing it out. Currently, RPG very far ahead in terms of this objective, yep. and they're pushing top. Oh yeah, and if you think that the this first familiar sight. objective on Tomb of the Spider Queen can carry you and cause you to snowball ahead, just wait until you see the first Zerg wave and you get good value of it by destroying the respective buildings in lane beforehand. So uh, yeah, RPG is doing an extremely good job here. The top board oh, is about again. to fall. Leas, oh, don't be my Sonya from Hero League. How many deaths does he have? Well, he can't have five because they only got... No, only uh, four deaths. Oh, maybe it's four. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe Leas was the Sonya from yesterday. Huh. <laughs> yeah, maybe he, yeah. Was, uh, he was smurfing on Europe, we do not know. <laughs> uh, for now, RPG looking to take it back. It's going to be four heroes moving in from Hot Slade to try and hold the line here. They haven't neutralized it. Tick, tick, tick. Too late. And that is going to be the first Zerg wave coming in for RPG to push the bot lane. Uh, top lane, they can just ignore because it's so pushed up that it's even soaking it right now would be risky. So they can full five man this. Yeah, they could definitely use five men to push it. Uh, as such a set, they have uh, level nine available. They are in a pretty good spot already. They destroyed a couple of buildings too. The towers are falling. What are you gonna do? One heroic ability ready already for Chromie, of course. That is the big advantage of having that feisty little dragon gnome in your ranks. And the slowing sense, what are you gonna do about it? Hot's Lady can't possibly approach them anymore. And moving forward, Hot Slady, like you said, pulling all the way back to their base. They don't want to be anywhere near this. Start onto Cassia, drops a blind, but the Chromie damage misses. So yep. why? Able to escape. Still, the Ultra List, the big, mean Zergs on the front lines are standing, and they are absorbing so much damage from the structures and the poke from Hot Slady's. So they're going to have to take care of those first. Uh, they can't even pick up the globes here because they're getting so far pushed back. And this is looking more and more grim for Hot Lady. Level 10 now available. This time we won't see the Tranquility, unfortunately. The more standard uh, Twilight Dream has been chosen. Yeah, they are against Sonya and stuff and Anubarak. Two heroes who can dive very deep so the Twilight Dream could work good. Zarya can't dive so deep because nice. this happens. Down she goes. Carlo able to burrow over the, I guess, through space, literally, in this particular <laughs> scenario. But he got out, so it's all good. Why oh, did it? Boy. As Malthiel gets the kill, the chicken. For a first show, we go Mouth Ale, doing a good job. Yeah, doing a really good job. He didn't go for a touch of death. He relied on the slow on his Q, which we can't really fault him for it because more CC is always good, especially yeah. against the low mobility target like Zarya. Aggro juggling. Wang just staying in range, taking the maximum possible amount of shots he could take without dying, yeah. and then pulling back to let his team do it. Loktar and Wang juggling the damage, and then they all pull back the second they have finished the objective. Very nicely done. A well-managed push by RPG. And, of course, it's the right thing to do when you murder him. You can t you can afford to take the all that damage because of your trade. Second wind, it's so good. And for all of those support players amongst you, if you're laning with a murder, don't spend too much mana and resources on healing him because all he needs to do is just wait a couple of seconds and let the regeneration process kick in. So oftentimes I see a lot of support players using the heals when they're off cooldown on Murden, when in reality they could save a lot of mana by just letting him wreck. Carlo, boom, the chromie damage, but he's just too sustaining with that Nerubian armor able to escape this time. Nicely done. Okay, so. Everything's looking good for RPG. If there's a time window, though, that Hot Lady wants to utilize, it is now, before RPG hits that level 13. They're already significantly behind, so they really want to get some kills under their belt to stabilize, get some XP, and maybe make something happen. And they have the tools for it. They have the Sonya, they have the Cocoon, which is currently on cooldown, unfortunately, but all they need to do is just find a target. Maybe Chicken is the one they were looking for. They're looking for him. There's a the CC. He drops the Tormented Souls as an escape here. Didn't get a huge amount of value, didn't actually spread too much, but it got him out of there yeah. thanks to the armor, he is all good. Yeah, I think he just wanted to pop it for the additional armor and damage reduction he would take from it. Not sure if that is always <laughs> a smart trade-off though, because even if he had died, it would have been a 90 second cooldown for, what is it, 12, 15 seconds, 20 seconds of 
being dead, so yeah. But it's, yeah. sometimes, you know, it's, it's in your system, it's in your reaction time, so. Exactly. Malthael still gets value even without his heroic. He's not just a heroic machine, so it is still good that he stayed alive. Wang is very far forward. Pops the avatar, gets focused, healing static. As the ball lightning is denied, Cassia not enraged to get that second bounce. Yeah, there we go. Uh, once again, a big fight going down. This time, fortunately for Hotsley, nobody died, but look at that Bruiser camp as well. Already dealing so much damage on the keep, and similar to Sky Temple, I think on Brax's holdout, you cannot afford to take that much building damage, because those Zergs, they will push you in, and they will destroy every weakened keep they can find if you can't defend it anymore. So, yeah. Hot's Lady, they're caught between a rock and a hard place. On the one hand, they don't want to fight because they're a town down. On the other hand, they don't want to give up those beacons, because the next Zerg wave, which is going to spawn in the top, could be the nail in the top in the coffin already. Yeah, they need to be careful. They need to try and protect that top lane as best they can. Unfortunately, Zerg's already coming. That's a full hundred percent. They weren't able to contest it. They have to defend this together. Yeah, they have to. Now you you have to make a big decision. Do you fight outside of your base and try to get some quick kills and then defend, or do you try to uh, defend the core here, maybe? Because I doubt that they can defend this key for long. I think it's going to be a core hold. They're oh, going to try. They're okay. going to try any kind of holds here. Yeah. RPG, <laughs> oh. beautiful. But bye, Banelings. Oh well, no, a couple of them make it in. That's a little yeah. bit of damage. The Baneling Bust is initiated as in comes Chicken into the backline. Being a distraction to guarantee this keep going down. And it will go down the ball lightning. Yeah, full value. It's nice to know. Oh, I think one less than full value. So either way, uh, decent work there, but all the damage is healed. The Ultralisk still alive. Hunter Killers on the way in. The Guardians in the backline on the way as well as the core starts to take damage, but very slowly. Catapults, though, are coming in from the other lane. Yeah, the cocoon has been used here as well. Gets popped at the moment as we speak. Infinity. Wang in trouble, though. He Ooh. went a little bit too deep here. I'm not really sure where he went. I think he took so much damage from the towers there as well. But he falls, and without Muradin, there is nothing that RPG has left in the front line. But at the same time, also Cassia ended up falling. The Divine Shield has been used right now. Can they kill Chicken? Yeah, Chicken saying, who needs the front line when we have their back line? <laughs> and jumps into it, great, being a great distraction. An RPG taking it the second game convincing 2-0 there Whew. very clean very clean tetra i gotta say rpg continues to impress me more and more i definitely thought it would be a closer series here between them and hot's lady but i'm not sure what the matter was with hot's lady today they looked extremely unorganized like carlo didn't seem to have a good day Palmy looked relatively pale as well. Meng, I'm not sure if he played the Warriors or the heroes he's normally good on, Zarya and Uther. Hmm, something seemed off for Hoss Lady today. I don't know what it was though.